In this video, I'll explain how Motion.io's built-in automations work and how your business can use them to elevate your customer experience while reducing the amount of emails, meetings, and tedious project management work required to move projects across the finish line. As a bonus, stick around to the end of this video because I'll show you an example of a real-life automation workflow that I created for a Motion.io user. Let's go ahead and dive in. What's up everybody, Sam Cholbowski here, and I'm one of the co-founders of Motion.io, a client onboarding and engagement platform that lets your team collect information, get feedback on deliverables, sign documents, and communicate with clients in white-labeled portals. Before diving into the nitty gritty details of how to set up automations in Motion.io, I'm gonna start by giving you a TLDR of how they work. In Motion.io, you can create automations in both active projects and templates. To create an automation, you must specify at least one trigger and at least one action. Triggers are the events that must happen for an automation to run, while actions are the things that you want Motion.io to automatically do for you. To first give you an idea of the types of things you can do with automations in Motion.io, I'll start by giving you an overview of the different actions that are available. Email automation actions allow you to send instant notifications to the email address or addresses that you specify. Task automations allow you to activate tasks for clients to view and complete in their portals, archive tasks to hide them from from those portals, as well as import entirely new tasks from one of your Motion.io templates. Similar to task automation actions, the stage automation actions that are available allow you to activate, archive, or import entire project stages. And finally, portal page automation actions let you show or hide specific pages within the client portals associated with your various projects and templates. And now that you understand the basics, I'm gonna walk through the process of creating a new automation in Motion.io. Before I do, however, it's important to point out that while you can create automations in active projects, I generally suggest creating them in templates. And this is because when you add automations to a template, Motion.io will automatically pull them in each time a new project is created from it. This helps save your team a ton of time during onboarding because it totally eliminates the need to create or manage automations at the individual project level. To create automations in a template, navigate to your template library, click the edit icon next to the template you want to modify, and then click automations from the top navigation bar. On this page, you can view any of the automations you've created already and create new automations by clicking the blue button towards the bottom of the page. When creating automations, your first step is to configure the trigger and Motion.io provides four different trigger options to choose from. Task triggers allow you to initiate automations when a task you specify is completed, activated, or archived. Stage triggers allow you to kick off automations when an entire project stage is completed, activated, or archived. Project triggers are especially useful when creating automations and templates. Using project triggers, you can set up automations that run immediately each time a project is created from a template or have automations run when a project you created previously is marked as complete. This lets you set up automations to instantly activate tasks the moment you onboard a client or import and activate offboarding tasks when a project is finished. And finally, the form block triggers enable you to kick off automations based on specific responses or fields entries in a Motion.io form. After configuring your trigger, you'll see an optional section directly below it in the workflow builder titled Delay. While toggled off by default, the Delay section allows you to specify the number of hours, days, weeks, or months before actions in your automation are executed. Adding delays to your automation workflows can be especially helpful in projects that have a well-defined timeline, as they enable you to do things like activate a task for clients to schedule a check-in call after they've worked with you for X number of weeks, archive completed tasks and stages after a certain number of days to hide them from your clients in their portals, or give your team a certain number of hours to edit or customize portal pages before clients can access them. Whether you use the delay function or not, the last step before you can save an automation is going to be to add at least one action, which you can do in the field directly below. Because I gave a high level overview of the different automation actions available earlier on in this video, in this section, I'm gonna point out a few things that are helpful to know about some of the specific actions available. To use the activate task or activate stage actions, the task or stage you want to make available to clients in their portals via that automation must already exist in the project or template. Along these same lines, to use the archive task or archive stage action, the task or stage you want to hide from a client in their portal 
must also be a part of that project already. On the other hand, Motion.io's import task and import stage actions allow you to import any of the other tasks or stages in any of your Motion.io templates. A quick tip for using these actions is to set up an internal only imports template that you can use to create import actions without adding the tasks or stages you might need to your primary customer facing template. And I'll show you an example of what this looks like in just a few moments. A final thing I'll point out is that if you are using the activate task or import task actions in your automations, Motion.io gives you the option to set a due date for those tasks. I strongly recommend using this feature because when you set a due date, Motion.io will automatically follow up with clients until they complete the tasks you send them. If it wasn't clear already, Motion.io's built-in automations are extremely flexible and powerful and can adapt to virtually any type of business or workflow. To help you determine how to best use this functionality in your business's implementation of Motion.io, I'm gonna walk you through an example of a automation workflow I helped set up for a real-life Motion.io user. So I'm here in my Motion.io account and the workflow I'll be showing you is nearly identical to one I built for a Motion.io user who runs a law firm. And at this law firm, the primary service they offer to clients is helping them with the legal formation of their businesses. Clicking into my template titled Business Formation Services, you'll notice that here on the tasks page, there's not much there. It's really just one stage with some basic onboarding tasks. And the reason why I've set up my template this way is that because the tasks that clients need to complete post onboarding are gonna be different depending on how they would like to register their business. So after clients tell me whether they'd like to register their business as an L LLC, S Corp, or C Corp, I'll use an automation to automatically bring in only the relevant tasks and stages related to the answer that they gave. A few moments ago, I shared a tip that if you want to use the import task or import stage actions, it's a good idea to set up a separate internal only template you can use to import those tasks and stages. To show you an example of what this looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of my customer facing template and open up the internal template I've set up in this template, I have unique stages and tasks for LLC, S Corp, and C Corp formation, as well as an additional stage for offboarding tasks. The big advantage of setting things up this way is that if your business offers three, four, or even five different types of services, you still only need to set up two unique templates, one that is client facing and another you can use to import various tasks or stages depending on the specifics of each project. So now to show you how all of this ties together, I'm gonna hop back into my customer facing template and open up the automations page. Going from top to bottom, the first automation I've set up in this workflow activates a task for the client to complete their service contract agreement as soon as the project is created from this template. Once the client does sign, the second automation automatically activates tasks for them to schedule their initial consultation and complete two additional intake forms. Then directly below it, I've set up three different automations automations to account for the three different ways a client can register their business with us. Based on how clients answer the corresponding question on the entity selection form, Motion.io will automatically import the corresponding stage from the internal template I showed you just a few moments ago. And finally, the last step of this automation workflow will import a series of offboarding tasks once the project is marked as completed. So that does it. Hopefully this video provided you all of the information you need to create and use automations in Motion.io. That said, if you have questions or get stuck along the way, our team at Motion.io is here to help. Send us an email anytime at hello at Motion.io or start a live support chat with us by clicking the blue chat icon you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner of your account settings page. Until next time, everybody, take care.